And it looks like we're off. Let's see what's so, here in the chest in Link's house. Ah, Ice Rod, right from the beginning, that one item that tends to never show up uh, until the very last place you can possibly look. But they're getting it really early. Interested to see uh, what Turtle Rock requires and how early you're going to find that Fire Rod and Red Cane. Uh, we are playing a game mode called Standardized Swords. Uh, are standard with randomized swords, so at Uncle here, there'll be one of seven items that'll be available that will be attack items to clear their way through uh, the escape. They can get the hammer, they can get bow, fire rod, uh, either cane, or just a stack of bombs. Let's see what they get. And they do get the red cane. Uh, Total Rock early, early, looking more and more likely. Yeah, um, you never want to see like a, a double dip for one, but Turtle Rock is one of those situations where you can actually triple dip the dungeon. Um, go in there with the cane, then later with the fire rod, then later with the ice rod to beat the dungeon. So hopefully we won't see a situation like that with our owners. Well, our uh, prediction of Master Sword Green Mel Cold Stair is already out the window as we found Blue Mel very early as well. Uh, that's going to come in real handy, especially while they don't have very many hearts. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, some of the farming strats. Uh, I know they're looking for a bomb so they can get the last three chests of escape. Um, but with all of the magic items, that becomes kind of awkward because you only have a limited magic supply. So you have to be very careful with um, where you decide to farm for those bombs. And as you say that, it looks like one of our uh, prize packs for the Green Guards are going to be full magic refills. Uh, that'll come in really handy here. Now, Bula taking on this blue guard here. We'll see what's in the blue guard chest. And uh, just the map. Uh, so the sanctuary chest will have an item in it. Ooh, we got a bomb no. for Vulajin. Yeah, Vula's already got a bomb. Uh, I have seen progression in those back three chests far too many times. Uh, this tournament, uh, and a lot of times it has cost racers significant amounts of time, especially if you find the gloves back there, and if you do not have a lift upgrade and you need to go back to this chest, you have to go through the entire back half, the sewer half of escape over again just to get back there. Yeah, and, uh, early and uh, make that even more difficult because um, then you have to actually go through the sewers, which is no fun either. Yep, uh, and then uh, getting the bombs in that chest, uh, so both Tiro and Vula are going to be uh, getting all three of those chests in the back uh, half of escape. See the uh, ball and chain guard uh, strats here. Uh, Vula with a nice kill on that green guard. Uh, Vula's just going to throw some pots and then uh, throw some uh, red blocks here. Looks like Tiro's probably going to do the same. Uh, Tiro's going to do two pots. And a big 20. Um, not super useful, but a little bit more um, disproportionately useful in the early game, just because it helps uh, at the least if they run out of bombs in Kakariko. Um, it brings them closer to the 50 rupees they need to buy bombs in the shop there. Yeah, they're wanting to get uh, 100 rupees before Kakariko just so they can access the bottle vendor. Uh, he'll have an item there. He normally sells a bottle. Uh, he can sell anything up to and including hammer, boots, flippers, flutes. Uh, world is oyster for that bottle vendor. And uh, you say that's a big 20. That is one of the many we will be seeing in this race. Uh, I cannot remember exactly how many uh, 20 rupee chests or items there are in the game, but there's at least a couple dozen. Yeah, I think there's like five or six rupee hordes. Um one or two green rupees. So yeah, there, there's a lot of money to be found across the world of Hyrule. And we'll see them both uh, head back to the mantle here, uh, push that to the side and head into the back half of the escape. And uh, chat is uh, helping us out 28 uh, red rupees in this game. And we have seen one of such. It's also worth noting, um, as they go into the sewers, you will see they have a light cone. 
Um, in the vanilla game, you're expected to have the lamp at this point, which provides you that light cover. Um, we do provide a, the programmers have been kind enough to give us a courtesy light comb for the escape sequence. But once we leave this area, any dark rooms we encounter will be completely dark until we find the lamp. And you'll see uh, some richer sequence break out of that if they find, say, like the gloves early. They may go up to Death Mountain and check what the old man has. Uh, going through dark rooms is, will never be required uh, in the logic, but it can uh, can help you out quite a bit if you uh, get lucky. That's honestly one of my favorite parts about Randomizer is um, discussing the sequence breaks and um, the potential ramifications of doing a dark Death Mountain or something of that nature. Yeah, Death Mountain being one of the easier uh, dark rooms to do that with. Now we'll see what is in these three chests here from Vula. It's always weird how that works out. Every time you get bombs for escape, it always seems like there's nothing in escape. Another uh, big 20 and a couple heart containers. Uh, pieces. Not even the full heart containers there. Ooh, early flute. That's going to be really nice in terms of mobility. That's always something you really like to see. Uh, again, in terms of ability, it does open up a lot more of the game for them. Uh, almost to the point where you have too many choices where to go. Uh, they can go up to Death Mountain at this point. Uh, they can only check the Spectacle Rock uh, cave item, uh, or they can only access that. They can check the top of Spectacle Rock, uh, but they will be activating that pretty much as soon as they get to Kakariko. Yeah, it's always nice to get that before Kakariko, just because it's such a convenient activation. And it looks like we already have some divergence here with uh, Vulagen going straight to the Lost Woods, finding the rupee pool on the tree. Uh, like finding a uh, bomb upgrade there where the mushroom normally is. It's time to see if we have an early Aghanim requirement. And no, uh, just an nope. arrow upgrade. So at least Aghanim won't be required for that item. However, um, it still might be required for Dark World access. Yeah, for Dark World access, we need three items. We have to have a Moon Pearl. Uh, and then we have to have at least one glove upgrade. Then we need either the other glove upgrade or the hammer. And even then, the eastern half of Dark World could be locked off uh, behind Aghanim as well. Uh, if they are not able to find the hammer or the uh, flippers. Yeah, and some really nice early items. Avulajin picking up earlier, but uh, Tiru now picking up a bottle. So it's a really convenient early Kakariko village with the bottle and the flute. They're going to be able to take care of almost everything there is to do here, at least in the light world, while they're here. And, uh, there's a ether tablet and the lamp from Vula. A uh, heart container and another heart container. So going up to five hearts right off the bat just from Blind's Hut. Yeah, also making another case of that early Turtle Rock play. And we just got a quick map check there. Uh, the only one I had a chance to see was Eastern being a blue pendant. I did not get a chance to see Desert or uh, Hera. I missed it. Yeah, it looks like they are all three crystals. Uh, no red crystals. Uh, crystals five and six are required to access the uh, Pyramid Fairy. You'll get two items there. Uh, but those aren't necessarily all the time required. Uh, we like getting uh, green goo from the uh, well. And uh, silver arrows, if only he had a bow to shoot those with. Uh, those will come in very handy much later this game. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting Kakariko. Like, we've certainly got some useful items, but nothing groundbreaking. Usually you see, you know, hammer or some really exciting items, but it's been kind of a slow start here, actually. And uh, both racers not having enough uh, rupees to check the bottle vendor quite yet. We'll see what's back here in the back of the chicken hut. And another heart piece, but that will give four for Vula. Let's 
see. Tiru should be able to get his hundred in this um in the well here if I'm doing my math right. Just a five bomb upgrade from the back of Cross Products Bar. Uh no, I think Tiru is gonna be two rupees short of the bottle vendor for the time being. If I'm not mistaken, I think oh well Sick Kid's got a blue rupee, so there you go. Yeah, that's still not enough for Vula, though. Uh, Tyr is going to go ahead and activate his flute. Uh, all rise, please. That music just brings tears to my eyes every time. Uh, Vula doing the same thing at the same time. Uh, High-fiving each other there. The duck is running amok. Might get a library check here from Vulagen. Hookshot. Oh. It is a boots required seed. Yeah. Hookshot, one of the few items that is 100% required every single run. Uh, at least within the logic. Um, the only ones I can really think of, uh, you gotta have a sword, you gotta have a bow, you gotta have a hookshot, you gotta have a hammer, um, you gotta have uh, both lift upgrades, and moon pearl, and that's it, I think. And Ooh, there's our lift upgrade. I saw oh. Blue Legend check the race game before taking it. I wonder if Tiru will just opt to do the race. A lot of times when um, you have a slow Kakariko, sometimes you'll see runners just take a chance on the race game being useful. Tiru did not check the uh, check the bottle vendor. Let's hope there's nothing important there. Good point. Tiru is opting to go ahead and take a chance on the race game. Unfortunately, he'll just get a bomb upgrade. You'll see how nice that uh, that flute is to come in handy. Normally, you'd have to save and quit after this. Uh, Vula just ports over to the dam. Now, yep, Tiri's going to go ahead and uh, finish the race here. Deciding not to pick up the bomb upgrade. Looks like Tiru is actually fluting to desert, so we're going to get a ledge check. Oh, a sword! That's actually really nice to know. Um, and then we're also going over to Agina's cave to see what he's holding. That is something you don't see a lot of runners do early. Um, I like doing it early. I've seen... the Man, every time that I go there late, there's progression there. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Moon Pearl in Mini Moldorm Cave. And the boots, so Vula can go back and grab that hook shot. Uh, hopefully he will check a uh, bottle vendor at the same time. Yeah, I like an Agonist Cave check, especially with Flute. Um, I just think it's such an easy check at that point, because um, you can save and quit, and then actually come out of Link's house, and then Flute to seven. So it's just a really convenient check with the Flute. Uh, Vulet's going to go ahead and check out uh, Ice Rod Cave up here. Dashing can be a little dangerous without a sword, especially on some of these little smaller enemies that are very mobile. Um, he's got enough hearts to make it through here pretty easily. These crabs can be very dangerous, though. Yeah, with blue mail, I think they only do one heart of damage, which is nice as well. We'll see what uh, Ice Rod Cave has for us here. And just a red rupee. I think, what, 22, 23 more, 24 more? Yeah, just enough rupees to keep you from getting the good stuff, but not enough to make a play like Zora feasible right now. Looks like we're going to see what the bottle vendor has here. And Valvetter has magic powder. Uh, that could come in handy here in a few minutes. Uh, whenever they find a either the other glove upgrade in the mirror or the hammer to go check the uh, mad batter. Uh, but that's also just a really nice safety item to have as it'll turn uh, the anti-fairies into fairies. Uh, it comes in real handy in uh, dungeons like Mire, Pod, and Ganis Tower. Yeah, there's a wonderful room before Ganon's Tower with a, both a bunny beam and an anti-fairy, so you, all the safeties in the world in that room with magic powder. Vula's going to go ahead and check out Death Mountain. It's a good play. Uh, here you'll see him doing uh, checking out the old man. He doesn't need to do this in the dark because he's got the lamp, but he can check out the uh, right side of Death Mountain. 
Uh, he can pretty much do everything up in Death Mountain aside from getting the item on Spectacle Rock in Tower of Hera right now. We got Tiru getting his pearl and boots now. We'll probably be making a very similar play. It'll be interesting to see if he checks Ice Rod Cave. Um, I don't see why he wouldn't, but you never know. Maybe he wants to take the gamble and head on to Death Mountain. Yeah, there's uh, nine items here. Uh, ten, actually, and uh, the village will be able to take care of. Uh, one from the old man, seven from the caves, uh, Paradox Cave over on uh, East Death Mountain, uh, Spiral Cave, and uh, up here on the top of Spectacle, or in the Spectacle Rock Cave, they'll be able to check the item on top of Spectacle Rock. Yeah, Bulligen showing one of the other advantages to having a hook shot, especially without the sword. Um spin speed or the hookshot speed um, is able to uh glitch link to where link is perpetually in boots mode um it allows very quick traversal of the overworld and, and that's actually one of the most useful spots to use it is right there on that uh death mountain stretch yeah the uh the only issue is you cannot use your sword but when you don't have a sword that's really not much of a uh not much of a downside now uh, heading over here into paradox cave so named because when you're on the top floor and you exit, you show up lower than the exit on the bottom floor. There's seven items in here. Bula's going to go ahead and grab the first two. Up. Oh. And uh, Tiru pulling off a water walk out of the uh, Ice Rod Cave. Uh, very nice. Looks this like is something you do not see island. very often in this uh, tournament. No, not at all. Um, certainly an interesting play, especially if Hobo has something useful. Oh, a bug catching net. Not necessarily anything handy, but uh, could be a good safety item later on. Uh, Vula finding the mushroom and the magic cape. Uh, that magic cape and the lamp points towards Aga, but they only need one of the other two items, either a lift upgrade or a hammer, and they will not really necessarily need to, to kill Aga for Dark World access. Kiru going back to get the bottle vendor, so he'll be picking up his powder as well. Now he's heading down to go get his hook shot, so he'll probably be heading to Death Mountain shortly as well. No, just a uh, heart piece on the floating island. Oh. Well, we can't go that way. Got to go back down in Spiral Cave here. So three crystals in the light world. Uh, they'll mean three pendants in the dark world. That kind of points me away from being a pedestal seed. Uh, but with pedestal seeds being as rare as they are, most things point away from that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what dungeons are pendants too. Um, I know a lot of people like to see pendant turtle rock, pendant misery mire, pendant swamp, but also just the the way this version of randomizer seems. Um, it doesn't seem to be any respecter of dungeons, and a lot of times pendant dungeons are just as viable as crystal dungeons in terms of what items they hold. Yeah, I I tend to not like to see a pendant swamp just because, man, I really don't want to go into swamp. Um, if it's a pendant at all. And every time it's a pendant, there's probably something in there. Absolutely. Getting a Eastern check for um, Bulajin. See what Sahasrala has in the back of his closet. Three hundred rupees, so we're getting closer to that Zora play. Other than that, just some equipment, um, some arrows, and a heart piece. Yeah, Zora is technically in the logic at the moment. Uh, Vula only needs eighty-five rupees to get out there, uh, and he's probably only got a single arrow. But uh, Vula going to go ahead and head into Eastern here. Uh, three items in Eastern that could possibly be. Uh, something that they would want. Uh, only two of them are currently, or one, two chests are locked behind uh, Logic, right? Or no, only one is locked behind Logic. They do got flames. Sorry about that. Yeah, I believe the only thing out of Logic right now is Armos. Yeah, yeah, they need the bow to get to that because there's a red Igor in the way. T Rube cleaning up Paradox Cave, getting his 20 rupees and a bomb.
This is just another opportunity when having the hook shot comes in handy because the hook shot one shops um, these mini Moldorms, which makes clearing this cave out. Um, and I know they didn't have it for mini Moldorm cave, but um, mini Moldorm cave also much easier with hook shot. It just makes a lot of the it makes a lot of the overworld traversal a little bit safer because you can just take care of some of those enemies. We are uh, only 20 minutes in, and they have 10 hearts already and blue mail. Uh, very sort of like a defensive seed, this game. Absolutely, and even, you know, you're looking at the hook shot stunning those skeletons. It's like they don't even have a sword yet. Um, although we do know where one is, you know, there is a sword at Desert. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, what they find first, if they find the, the mitts and mirror or if they find the book first. We're having a little bit of trouble here in the Southwest stream, uh, but gets through it. See what's in this next chest here, and just another twenty rupee. Once again, slowly but steadily getting the money for Zahora. We did have the three hundred rupees uh, behind Sahasrala, but other than that, it's been a very slow, you know, twenty rupees here, five rupees here, and just a slow grind for that Zora money. And yeah, this uh, key chest over here should be the big key. Uh, we haven't seen it yet. This is the only other chest that it could be in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the small key here. Uh, it is looking more and more like Aga. Basically, if they find a sword... I minute they find a sword, I would not be shocked to see them head directly to Aga. Uh, they still got a few items to check. There's big key or a big chest in Eastern. There's Zora. There's the uh, mushroom. But I mean, if they want, they can water walk to the uh, to the waterfall and see what those two chests are. Tiru is checking Bonkrox. Did Vulcan oh. check this? Vulcan did not. Just a comp. Oh, a sword. Oh, a sword. Aga's definitely looking a lot more possible at this point. At the moment, it's a slight knowledge advantage to Tiru. Oh, Tiru's actually, if I'm not mistaken, is he setting up for Hulahan at this point? Uh, it looks like he is. He's trying to make that Zora play. I think it's smart. I think it's smart. Uh, you can get a couple items up that way. Um, I would. Oh, he missed it. I would hope that he would port down to eight and uh, water walk up that way. Uh, Vula picking up his sword as well. Yeah, Bonkrox to me is like one of those item locations that if you don't go there when you first uh, when you first have access, you tend to forget it later on. Um, a lot of your mirror spots are going to be the same way, like Grove and uh, above the uh, cemetery ledge. Yeah, looks like we're getting a mushroom check from Tiru. Vula just deciding to walk over there instead of fluting. Yeah, you're, a lot of people aren't used to having flute this... Oh, half magic. That's a fantastic... This is like a safety seed. They're getting all the safeties in the world. It's going to be a very comfortable seed going for it. Yeah, they're not going to necessarily want for much. Um, they got silvers. They got half magic. They got powder. Uh, I mean, they've even got a bug net if uh, they want to capture some of those uh, fairies later on. Complete with two bottles. Tiru does have the slight knowledge advantage over Vulagen, knowing that there is now a Master Sword on Desert Ledge. But the closer we get into, the closer we come to facing Aga, um, I think he's going to lose that because I highly doubt Vulagen would go up to Aga's tower without checking Agina first. Yeah, it looks like Vula is setting up for a uh, for a fake flippers here. Uh, probably going to. Flip up to Hobo first. Um, the way this works is that when you don't have flippers and you jump into deep water, the game only checks on the second frame if you have flippers or not. If on the first frame you trigger a screen transition, and there are very, very few places you can actually do this in the game, uh, you will actually flipper away and the game will just continue on as if you had flippers. Now the issue is that if you get hit, and you are not on the screen that you originally jumped in on, you will take an instant death. Uh, that's why that little guard with the bow and arrow above uh, Hobo can be pretty dangerous.
Bulligen having a little difficulty finding the pixel to jump off the ledge and enable Fate Flipper. There he goes, he's got it. Um, if you actually face up and start a spin attack, which you of course can't do without a sword. Well, no, they have a sword, never mind. Um, but if you face up and start a spin attack and just tap the down button to where you go one pixel down, that's the pixel in which you can jump off the ledge and trigger the fake flipper glitch from the hobo location. Yeah, you want to be careful with that one because there's also a pixel that you can soft lock the game with. No kidding, did not know that. Yeah, if, uh, if you jump a little bit too far, it'll soft lock the game. And we'll see uh, Bula actually not doing the waterfall. He messes it up. He just realized oh, what he man. <laughs> so another little glitch that you can do right there is if you are fake flippering and you go into the waterfall uh, and you exit back out and you enter and you have the moon pearl, you'll actually start just water walking and you can walk on deep water and dash on deep water. It's really nice. Now it looks like Vula is just going to go ahead and skip Zora and skip the waterfall. Uh, he's not going to do Agina either. He is just going to go up and take on Aghanim. Yeah, maybe not um, the play I would make with the knowledge he has, but of course, you know, we know that the desert check is uh, actually, he may be backing out to do the desert check now. Yeah, yeah. Yep, there he goes. Unfortunately, the play he was making was the correct play for this particular seed, but yeah, not knowing, you know, what these items are, this is definitely a check I would make before going up the the walk to Agus Tower. We saw nobody really take advantage of it, but in Sasa's uh, hut, if you do want to talk to him, he will tell you where the green pendant is. Uh, we know that it's somewhere in Dark World. Uh, the green pendant is required to get the item that would normally be boost from Sahasrala. Uh, if you show that to him, he will give you an item similar to if you show a bottle to the sick kid, he will give you an item. Yeah, I wonder if Tiru is going straight to Aga. Tiru just finished up his Eastern check, so... I don't really know what else he could check that he hasn't at this moment, unless he wants to try to farm for Zora. Yeah, he is going straight to Aga. Um, he's really only got Zora and the Waterfall left to check. Now, they are both going to be going in at pretty much the same time, maybe two or three seconds apart. Yeah, this will be uh, quite the trek with Fighter Sword. Um, they don't really have a whole lot of items that can help them at this point. I mean, the Ice Rod maybe gives them a little bit of safety. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much going to be a Fighter Sword Aggo Tower at this point. Yeah, thankfully there's not too many rooms where you have to kill the enemies to progress. Uh, not really a lot of enemies that you have to kill the entire room to progress in. Uh, this first room being one of them. Um, there's a few enemies, keys locked behind enemies though, but... I think we're getting cane strats from Vula and hookshot strats from Tiru. I like Tiru's play there. Yeah, that's uh, very hard to that The uh, stun pack is going to be hearts as well. That can come in really handy. Yeah, in the vanilla game, anytime you stun an enemy and kill them, you will always get a green rupee unless the enemy has is supposed to drop a key or something of that nature. So that has been randomized. Um, so it looks like for this particular seed, anytime they stun an enemy and then kill the enemy, they will receive a heart in return. Yeah, and that could be any kind of like enemy drop in the game. It could be red rupees, it could be fairies, it could be full magics. And Tiru's only been playing for a couple months. I think he started probably back in November, December. Uh, but he is showing that he is very competent at this. Uh, there's a reason why he's two and one. Yeah, making a, he has a couple of seconds on Bulajin, uh, which I mean, of course, you know, a, a lead is very subjective here because any decision can, you know, completely turn the tables. But it does look like he's clearing out um, Agus Tower just a few seconds ahead of Bulajin. Just making great use of that hook shot. And they're really feeling that fighter sword. It takes so many hits to defeat all of these enemies. Um, this is a part of the game where the 
the game would actually expect you to have the master sword so these enemies are slightly tougher than uh, most of the enemies you'd see out on the overworld yeah Mulu's just choosing to uh, take advantage of like the Samaria blocks uh, keep his distance but he's got enough hearts to get in there and get up close and personal with these guards I love that this is supposed to be the scariest room in Naga Tower with the three different types of guards and you just literally just walk right past them. <laughs> this is the true scariest room where these guards can knock you off and then damage you while you are falling. Yes, I have fallen many times to that room. So as a kid, I always thought that uh, Aghanim's tiara there was his actual mouth, and he just had a really fancy mustache above it. I didn't realize that that was just like a headdress. <laughs> yeah, I always thought the green bowl cut was uh, his hair, and yeah. the shadows were his eyes. All right, how many blue balls do you think Aghanim is going to shoot? Um, just so you know... Um, in the vanilla game, this is completely random how many blue balls you get. In the randomizer, it, it's seated. So it's still randomized, but it's randomized in the same way for both players. So both players will get the exact same um, sequence from Agony. Uh No blue balls yet. Uh, t only needs uh, just uh, one or two more hits and he'll have back it down. Was that perfect? Uh, yeah, it was perfect. No blue balls. And let's see what we have here on the pyramid. Yeah, the only thing they could have possibly missed in the overworld was Zora, and it looks like Quake on the ledge. So, um, once again, for those who are hoping for an early TR play, we're getting ever so closer. Looks like we have uh, Green Pendant at Thieves Town, uh, Blue Pendant at Skull Woods, Red Pendant on Turtle Rock, and Red Crystals on Pod and Ice. Yeah, I always hate to see Pendant Thieves Town because it's such a useful dungeon. It it's, has little to no entrance requirements, and there's four items in it. Um, the Green Pendant does make it a little bit more attractive, but still, um, sometimes it's hard to dive uh, Pendant Dungeons when you have Crystal Dungeons that are available to you. Yeah, we are 32 minutes in, and uh, we've only gone into one dungeon that we couldn't even complete. Uh, Tyr is going to go right over here to Pod. Uh, it's really the only play that he has at the moment. Yeah, Pod or Catfish at this point. I think that's about it in the Dark World. Uh, say goodbye to about 20% of your Zora money there. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. If they have to go to Zora, that's bad news to come here. Oh, they can hook shot across the river. Uh, they do have that little uh, arrow pointing away to the side that they can uh, jump across there. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for pointing that out. Completely forgot about that one. About to find out real quick how far we're going to get in pod. If this is anything other than a key, then the rest of pod is bowlocked. Looks like we are going to continue on into pod. They can technically check a couple of other chests with the uh, newly legal bottle glitch, um, but they will not have to this game. And fire there's rod. the fire rod. That's real nice to have. Um, they could feasibly do a full clear up to a rock at this point. If they had a hammer and a club upgrade. Yeah, and if you're feeling really brave, you can try Skull Woods, uh, full completing Skull Woods. Uh, I believe it's a pendant dungeon, but um, if an item's on Mocula, that's certainly an option if you're feeling super brave. Fighter Sword Mocula is not easy. No, Mocula is a lot of people's least favorite boss for a reason. Uh, Mocula is hard to kill sometimes and can do a lot of damage with the spikes in the room. Spikes that do not care what mail you are wearing. 
looks like and, we're gonna get the potion glitch from Tiru. Yeah, this is a uh, cool thing to show off. Basically, using an empty bottle against the far right side of the room uh, while you're hugging that wall. Nope, uh, looks like he messed it up, so he knows and he is on his way out. Uh, Vula on his way out as well. Vula not bothering to check the potion glitch. It'll be interesting to see what's in Skull Woods to see if that dip into pod was actually required. With Skull Woods being a pendant, if Skull Woods has two um, two filler items in it rather than something you know needed to complete the game, then it might have been possible to single dip pod. And we are back to basically being neck and neck with these two here. Looks like Tiru's going to go ahead and check out Catfish. Vula is going to do the same. Yeah, this has been a very linear seat up to this point. I mean, the only variation we really could have had is if someone wanted to farm money for Zora. But, I mean, I certainly, I don't know that I would have done that. So far, these runners have been making a very sensible decision so far. I mean, you look at it this way, they only needed probably 50 rupees for Zora. Uh, Tiru had actually hit that Hulahan room, uh, we could be seeing a completely different game right now. Let's see what Catfish has. Just a big 20. Good bonk, Abula. Tiru having a little bit difficult with the spin speed there. I imagine that we... they're going to make their way over to um, Village of Outcasts now. Yeah, uh, man, they are right with each other, just completely in sync at the moment. Uh, even only 15 uh, rupees apart from each other, so this has been very, very close. So now the option is, do you, I mean, I assume you clear Village of Outcasts first, but do you check Skull Woods before doing that? Skull Woods is pretty fast, and you've only got uh, two items in there. Uh, I absolutely would. Yeah, especially with the Cane of Samaria. Not that it's a huge time save, but it does make that uh, vanilla big key chest a lot easier. And they're both remembering check out a uh, Bumper Cave up here as well. Just bombs up there. Yeah, with uh, the Magic Cape that is in Logic right now. Both avoiding the, uh, the little murderous dinosaur guys there. Uh, probably the worst enemy in the game, aside from Gibdos. I really hate mommies. <laughs> Looks like we are getting a Skull Woods check from both runners. They're both entering the same hole at the same time. This is, like, are, are we watching two different people? <laughs> they got a small key in that first chest, which is going to make routing um, this part easier because you can just go in the door to the right and you don't have to go through the um, bumper and cave to the south. I felt like we were watching one of those uh, GDQ uh, two games, one controller uh, <laughs> runs. Yeah, not really finding too much already. Uh, Tiri's going to check the uh, middle part here, Skull Woods. So, if you don't find an item here, do you go take on Machia? It's a pendant, but it's also an item. Well, it could also be in that... Uh... Oh, no, they haven't found any items yet. Oh! Hammer! That is, uh, that's real nice to have. I would just go directly down to, uh, Village of Outcasts at this point. I wouldn't bother with the rest of Skull Woods. Yeah, not only does that give us access to, um, that, not only does that make Dark World traversal quite easier, but also that allows us to full clear Skull Woods, because now we can access the big key chest in the basement. Uh, full clear Steve, Thieves Town. Oh yeah, sorry, full clear Thieves Town. <laughs> Thank you. 
also another convenient thing that opens up the warp portal here, which is really nice. So now they don't have to use the castle as their sole um, warp point. Yeah, they can access the uh, South Link House portal as well. Finding red mail in the C-shaped house, and just a single rupee at the chest game. Uh, Bootless going to go check the uh, Bobble House down here at the bottom part of uh, Village of Outcast. Fifty rupees, getting ever so closer to the Zora play. Yeah, well, they're going to use, I believe it's eighty down here on the uh, shuffle game, but Tira going directly into Beast Town, uh, finding his first of four items, which is a blue rupee. Bulijin getting his red mill, and I imagine he's going to be coming into Thieves Town. Yeah, I would just go ahead and do a full clear of Thieves Town. Um, it's one of those that if you need to go mode it later on, which this is a pendant, you don't have to, but it is the same amount of time to full clear as it is to go mode it. Um, even with Fighter Sword, uh, Blind only takes the same amount of hits as he would with any other item. Uh, just go ahead and finish this off. Yeah, and uh, especially with it being green pendant, you actually get that uh, one extra item for a total of five items out of this dungeon for full clear. Truly, and there's the uh, big key. So we're going to go see the back half of Thieves Town here in just a second. Not a whole lot in the front end of Thieves Town. I think we only got the blue rupee. So with Red Mill, this is going to be a much safer traversal, but that fighter sword, you still have to worry, particularly the grasshoppers upstairs, um, they're going to take a lot of sword hits to kill with the, this fighter sword. Always hope for the dream to just see somebody dash all the way up that hallway, and uh, it's never going to happen. Vulijin noped out of Thieves Town. He is checking the digging game. This is the first real divergence we've seen in the probably race about, so far. Right about 25, 30 minutes. Just 50 rupees in the top of Thieves Town. Let's see very shortly what we get from the digging game. Digging game is holding out on us. A single arrow, it looked like. Yeah, I think he's digging for Zora money at this point. There's really not much else to be gained from continuing the digging game. We're gonna check the uh, the tree kid down here, and uh, we'll probably make his way over to Hype Cave. If uh, Green Pendant and Rest of Thieves Town does not work out for Tiru, Vula noping out of that could come in really handy in terms of time saved. Ooh, oh, tight hits. That's going to hurt. Oh, Vula. Buddy. But let's see what Hype Cave has. Hopefully, he has something to make up for those. He will have to go back for those eventually. Foxman has 300 rupees. Look! Red rupee. Red rupee. Harpies. So that book could come in handy later on. Uh, he may need that to get in the desert. Uh, he may need that to check uh, either of the two tablets, but ugh, yuck. Well, with flute and mitts, we do have access to the mire area, and with the book, that actually does allow us to get the master sword off of the ledge. Because we don't have the mirror, so we can't mirror into desert yet. Nice blind fight from Tiru. Well, Bula is going to 
What is... Is Villa going up to Hera? He does have the hammer, so that is in logic. He's got a fire source to you, so if uh, anything's in the basement, he won't need to worry about that. He'll just have to take a break, go get a drink of water. It's like Tiru is going to clear out the, the rest of Village of Outcasts, and then I'm almost certain he's going to make his way through the south of Dark World to get his um, book as well. The uh, Vula going ahead and checking the pedest or on pedestal, the tablet. Uh, he can't actually get what's in it without a uh, Master Sword, but you see what's on it. Uh, and it looks like Bombos is on the French vanilla tablet there. Oh, unfortunate dead rock for a Vulajin. Yeah, I don't think Vula's necessarily misplayed anything. He is just, um, just the opposite of lucked out. I don't know what that phrasing is. Yeah, I mean, it could have just as easily, you know, um, Thieves Town could have been a bust, and then, you know, Vulagen would be ahead right now. But just unfortunately, the, those mitts are so valuable. Looks like we will have to head down into the basement here of Tower Hera. Uh, Vula, gonna go uh, probably grab a drink. With the myths, it looks like we're going to get some new information from Tiru. I think he's going to do blacksmith and possibly um, purple chest. Pick Jeremiah back home. Uh, he's going to do the long way. He's going to take the frog on a world tour. Certainly nothing wrong with that. The only possible that, well, I don't know, with the flute, it's not such a big deal. But um, when he gets the book, he won't be able to go directly over to the desert. He does have to take the blacksmith back. See what the basement of Hera holds for Vula? Probably gonna be the big key. Oh yeah. Sorry. That was a real that was a real dumb thing I just said. <laughs> Vula remembering to hit that crystal switch there on his way back up. Seeing a lot of people just forget that and have to go right back down. And Tiru getting his book, so it'll be interesting to see how long it takes him to get back to desert um, to get that master sword. Bulijin making his way up to these chests in Tower of Hera. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to go up to the top floor, if he decides to... Wait, no, he doesn't have to do bomb strats. Uh, he's got the hook shot. He can just hook shot over. Um, so we have the red boomerang, so that's our first item in Hera. Looks like uh, Moldworm has your second one. Very quickly, we're going to see what... Oh, he's actually doing a bat check first, so we get to see what um, the magic bat has for us. See what our curse is here, and it is just another heart piece. Curse of Extra Life. So we're getting hammer strats on Moldorm from Vulligen. Uh, Very taking, well executed. Yeah. Uh, hammer, you don't have the same uh, attack range as you do with most swords. And uh, Vula getting a Master Sword out of that. Uh, I'd be shocked if Vula did not make his way over to Desert just to at least get that tempered. Yeah, absolutely. Tempered Sword is a huge advantage over Master Sword. Butter Sword's always nice, but the difference between Tempered and Butter is nothing compared to the difference between Master Sword and Tempered. And he is remembering to go get that bomb boost. Uh, that would have been uh, not good if he forgot it, but we do also don't know if Bombos is really required or not. See, Tiru making the play for Desert to go ahead and get his Master Sword, which is nice because when he completes Tower of Hera, he'll already have his temper. Yeah, Desert is completely completable. Uh, they have a Fire Source and they have Boots, so have at it. 
Yeah, both of the runners are pretty neck and neck right now. Um, Tiru, of course, you know, along with the the Titan's mitts, you know, he's really just ahead half a dungeon at this point. Yeah, but man, when do you think Bula will go back into Thieves Town? Yeah, it might be a long time before he does that. That's the issue when you take gambles. It's you, you have to stick behind the decision. The moment you decide, like, oh, wait, I'm going to go back and check that place, you lose the advantage of the gamble. Yeah, Boots was required for this. Thankfully, uh, Boots is pretty early. But, uh, yeah, that Boots, I think, even just, just to get through hype, into Hype Cave. But, uh, yeah, we want to go see what's on the right side of the desert. Uh, actually, Tiru's going to check the big chest over here first. Just a small key in the big chest. So yeah, yeah, it had to be the in there. The other side. Man, once again, these runners are just neck and neck. It's like we've seen this through the majority of the race. Their their logic behind their decisions is very similar. Tiru completing a heart container, uh, getting one of the two items in desert. And there's the other, another 20 rupees. So, mo um... Not Moldworm. Uh, Lamola is not going to have anything, but we'll have a crystal for him. Yeah, once again, I feel like we have to only have 10 of the red rupees left. We found so many rupee pickups in chess this game. Tiru picking up his Master Sword and Bulijin picking up his Tempered Sword. So, so that will much of advantage for this dungeon because uh, I, I, if I had to guess, they'll probably use Fire Rod for land mode. But if uh, Tiru doesn't go all the way up to Harris Tower right now, uh, that Tempered Sword is going to save a lot of time for Vula. Truth, but Tiru also has the Titan's Mint, so Death Mountain is a much more valuable play for him right now than it was for Bulish. Yeah, he's got Hookshot Cave, he's got uh, Super Bunny Cave. Uh, he could feasibly do, uh, he could feasibly do Turtle Rock. No, actually, complete Turtle Rock as long as it's not Bombos, and Bombos is on Death Mountain. Yeah, and just looking at their item collection, I don't know, other than dipping in Turtle Rock, I mean, they'll, he'll probably complete Hera first, but after that, I don't know that he has a play other than dipping Turtle Rock. You can't One, dip... Meyer. Yeah, Meyer is a possibility. Um, yeah, they don't have flippers. Uh, you can fake flipper over to ice. Yeah, I would probably head over to Meyer. I mean, especially with Tempered Sword, Meyer's not terrible. You know, so you have the cane, you have half magic, so dash straps or dash straps, spin attacks, however you want to go about it. You have a couple of options with how to take care of Vitreous. Yeah, but where does Vula go? Does Vula really go back to Thieves Town now? I think he well, has can't to. can't check Meyer. chat bringing up a good item uh, Zora still has not been checked we talked uh, uh, we talked a lot about Zora for about 30 minutes and then we haven't talked about him for the last 25 I really want to know what's uh, what the old Zora King has for us uh, Meyer looks to be ether and it looks like Vula is going to make that uh, make that Zora play again uh, should remember to check the waterfall this time Not too much in Meyer Shed. It would be interesting to see if Tiru goes ahead and dies in the Meyer. Looks like he is. That's unfortunate because Hera, you know, having the Tempered Sword, it'll be interesting to see what he finds in here. Um, but without a bow, 
Uh, it's going to be a challenging Vitreous fight. I'm not sure I caught what happened there that caused Vula to stop water walking for a brief second, but he uh, gets it back. I believe, it, I'm not sure if it's if you pick up a heart piece or get another heart container, but um, I think getting an extra heart resets your water walking status. Oh no! And we're finally going to see what's on here on the. Uh... On uh, King Zora, uh, Tiru making his way through Mire at the same time. Oh, Zora with just a piece of heart. Oh, uh, that is a shame. That is a shame. I think all Vulijin has at this point is to go back into Thieves Town. I don't think he has anything else available to him. No, I don't think he does. He could finish off Skull Woods, but that's about it. Uh, he is going to check Mad Batter. Not going to find much uh, of use there. Luckily, this is a check that has him right next to the place where he needs to go. Hopefully, he makes the play back into Thieves Town after this. Tiru taking advantage of that powder. Yeah, Meyer, Meyer can be pretty dangerous. Uh, but it has a lot of anti fairies that if you have that powder, you can turn them into fairies and get your health right back up. It looks like Villa is checking the uh, Aghanim cave. He did not check this earlier. I believe it was an arrow upgrade? It was. That was a blind check. He did not know what was up there. Uh, if he did, he would not have gone up there. Tiru doing everybody's second favorite coffee break room, uh, getting the 300 rupees where the normal big key would be in Mire. And it looks like Villagin is heading back into. He's either going to do Thieves Town or he's going to do Skull Woods at this point. I think Skull Woods still has one item in it. Oh, a pet check. Oh, everybody get hyped for this. Uh, we were not expecting this. Uh, we were expecting Skull Woods or Thieves Town, but let's see what we got. Just, Just a heartbeat. Oh, man. Pedestal is Deadestal. Hopefully, he makes his way back into Thieves Town. If he doesn't, and Skull Woods has like the bow or something, though, that could be big for him. Tiru is still looking for that second item in Meyer. Maybe it's in the big chest. If not, I think it's on Vitreous. I think there's this other uh, chest that's crystal locked over here, too. Or no, he already got that. Never mind. Sorry, I was uh, focusing on Vula and his, uh, his pet check, but he is now going back into the Thieves. Ah, uh, man, it's a shame that this is one of the dungeons that you have to go back into because it is just, it's not a quick dungeon. Uh, you, well, it can be, but you don't, I'm uh, sorry, you pretty much have to do everything the same over and over again. But he didn't actually dip the back of it, so he really hasn't lost a whole lot of time here because he, he it's not like he died at blind, you know, like he, he noped out as soon as he 
cleared out the front part, so we're still. I don't. I don't think this is a huge time loss for him. I think he lost probably more time going up to Death Mountain without the Titans myths, honestly. Interior doing some of the more complicated uh, dark rooms in the game. Thankfully, he has his light cone. Uh, these are not fun to do in the dark at all. Yeah, putting that cane on the switch is incredibly stressful. You you can't see anything. You have fireballs shooting at you, and especially without a, a shield to block them, um, it's it's quite crazy. You'll probably see Aga being the toughest dark rooms in the game, but nobody does those without a lamp anyways, so. Yeah, you see that a lot in the older versions of Randomizer. Um, in some of the older versions, they actually give you a free light cone um, in the entire light world. Uh, so the lamp could be buried very deep within the logic. Um, not so much in V29 because um, you no longer get that free light cone in the light world. Seeing cape and dash strats here for uh, Vitreus for Tiru, as Vula is about to pick up his uh, mitts. So we're going to see hammer strats on the eyeball. This is not a comfortable place to be. Uh, the hammer does do tempered uh, damage, but still, this is a uh, not a very comfortable place to be, even with red melt. Looks like he's handling it just fine, though. Yeah, there we go. Nah, Very just... well executed hammer fight there. Yeah, just getting a hard piece, though. Uh, Meyer would have been much more suitable for a go mode, but he was there. He's going to do it. Uh, let's hope he goes up to Death Mountain next. Vulagen with a well done blind fight, getting a little off script, but handling it just fine. Looks like Tiro is getting the play up to Death Mountain, and this is going to be a very um, valuable trip for him because he's going to be able to clear out all of the Dark World as well as Hera. Yeah, the only thing he doesn't have access to is the item on top of Pedestal or on top of Spectacle Rock, which we know isn't really necessarily anything important. Uh, do we see him dip to a rock at this point? I think we do. Yeah, it depends on what he finds in Hookshot Cave. Looks like he is going to go ahead and open up to a rock. Oh, and uh, Bula is going to go ahead and do the hammer pegs and probably do. Uh... No, he's not going to do uh, purple chest. He doesn't have a mirror. Just bombs in the hammer peg cave. T Roof heading up to get his bombos from the tablet here. Yeah, he'll he'll finish off era, get his tempered, which will come in real handy for doing uh Turtle Rock. Oh, we're getting a Kingstone check for Vulagen. Uh T Ru did not check this. Flipper, oh, that's huge. That is big. That's Ice Palace opened up right there. Um, still don't have access to Swamp Palace without the mirror, but that's that's big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ice Palace having three items. Turtle Rock having six, if you count uh, <laughs> count uh, Mimic Cave, but they do not have a mirror, so they will not be able to access that part. King's Tomb is such a random check too, like it, without, especially without the mirror, so you can link it in with Graveyard Ledge. It might be a little while before T Root gets there. Yeah, yeah, it's another one of like all three of those kind of right there in that area: Monk Rocks, Graveyard Ledge, and King's Tomb. They're just so easy to forget about. Uh, that's an area that you pretty much never actually have to go back to, aside to just check those items. And if you don't check them when you first get access to them. 
you probably won't remember. And uh, we are seeing Vula go directly to Ice Palace. Um, it is a crystal, as opposed to dipping a pendant turtle rock. Uh, let's hope he finds something here. Yeah, half magic, fire ride, red mail. This is going to be a long dungeon, but a really easy dungeon for him to clear out. I think Ice Palace has the uh, highest per dungeon ratio of cool tricks you can do. <laughs> you always feel real cool when you kill a bunch of the penguins at once. Uh, finding one of the three items there, it is just a arrow upgrade. Tiru's making his ascent to Tower of Era. Going to be getting his red boomerang very shortly. I really like this uh, Stalfos room a lot. This is one that always makes you feel really good when you pull it off. It's, it's relatively easy, but it's just a really neat little thing. Yeah, that was one of the first tricks I learned uh, when I started practicing for the NMG speedrun. A uh, very good bomb, bomb jump. Tiru heading into his Moldorm fight. Looks like we're going to get some hammer strats from him as well. Uh, good kill on the Pengators there by Bulajin. Usually just hookshot all of them. But uh, Bula doing uh, really well here in Ice Palace. And uh, Tiru having a little bit of issue with Moldorm. This game came out nearly 30 years ago, and no boss in video games will ever give me as much anxiety as uh, as Moldorm does. I agree with that wholeheartedly, particularly the one in Ganon's Tower. Yeah, and then they made him the first boss in Link's Awakening, and I was just like, oh no. <laughs> I think we're getting a spike cave, spike cave check from T Root. See what Bula finds up here in the top chest. Just a key. So I think that means either big chest, ice tea room, or uh, Cold Stair himself. Hey, okay, now Tiru can deflect arrows. It's like Tiru's heading over to East Death Mountain, probably gonna get that on the Dark Death Mountain check. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, for his sake, I hope there's uh, something in there with that. Oh! Can't jump across that, uh, no matter how much speed you got. Uh, first take over, there's something in there without having to dump into Turtle Rock, but uh, we're having a good uh, bomb jump out of the uh, Freezor room. Just a compass in the Ice 2 room. I believe he's found two of the items. I think it was a, a arrow upgrade and then a rupee. Whoops. I think he meant to hook. Oh, never mind. He's hook hook shotting over here. And another arrow grade, uh, arrow upgrade. So yeah, it looks I like the ice was a bust. Fun. 
see what uh, Shot Cave has. Uh, so named because all but one of the chests you do require a hookshot to get to you. Funnily enough, hookshot can be found in this cave. Uh, you can just uh, bonk across with the boots to get to that first chest. Bulligen missing one of his shots on Cold Stair. Thank, uh, thankfully, he has half magic, so it's not a big deal. But if you don't have half magic here, you have to make every one of those fire rod shots count. If you miss just one, you don't have enough magic to break through Cold Stair's ice. Other than the, that, though, a very nice Cold Stair fight for Bulligen. There is no, not much feeling worse in this game than getting to Cold Stair and running out of magic before you break his shell. Yeah, Cold Stare and Mothula, you both are, both bosses require at least some amount of magic to get to them. Um, so dying to them in particular uh, can be very devastating in a run. Looks like we are getting a TR dip from Tiru. Yeah, I think uh, I think Bo has to be up here or mirror. Yeah, definitely some kind of progression. Looks like we're getting the Meyer dip from Bulligen. This will be a slightly easier boss fight for him with Tempered. We could hear the great pendant dungeon music. So still, um, one of the big questions in my mind is when is Tiru going to get back to Kingstone to get those flippers? Depending on what he finds in this dungeon, it could, because Ice Palace didn't have progression in it. So, you know, I think there's a good chance that he's going to have something in here that sends him somewhere. I'm thinking it, he's either going to find the bow or mirror. If he finds the mirror, the mirror is probably the best thing he can find in this dungeon right now, because the mirror um, only opens Swamp Palace for him. If he finds the bow, then you're looking at Pod and, you know, possibly other checks before you get back to Kingstone. I'm finishing up Eastern. Um, yeah. And we just got to figure out when Tiru is going to go back and check out King's Tomb to pick up those flippers. Oh, and there is the mirror. Looks like he is deciding to continue on with the dungeon, which at this point I agree. I mean, with the mirror, you also get access to Mimic Cave, and in the odd chance that there is maybe, you know, some other progression on Laser Bridge or something, you'd hate to have to make this walk twice. There he goes. Often to use a fire rod on these pokies, it's a one hit kill on them. Yeah, just a couple enemies from Mario taking a field trip over here in Link to the Past. <laughs> kind of like that area of Breath of the Wild where Waluigi just shows up. Vula going to go ahead and clear out uh, Misery Mire here. Uh, we already know that there's not really much of uh, interest here, but it is Crystal. Yeah, it's kind of interesting too. I mean, aside from King's Tomb and Zora, I believe the runners pretty much have the same check. Well, and Vulagen having completed Ice Palace, but aside from a few small differences, their routing has been very similar throughout this race. So in a slightly different order, but a lot of the same checks.
Uh, let's see what Mimic Game has to offer us here. The Just boomerang. the boomerang. Yeah, two are taking an advantage of um, a, a trick with the mimics. If you if you're not making any movement and you grab onto the wall, you can actually use the directional pad to control the mimics um, without Link moving. Incredibly useful in Ganon's Tower. Yeah, you'll see uh, people use it in that first mimic room a lot uh, with the uh, movable statue. It'll be interesting to see. I haven't been counting items, but I wonder if he goes ahead and defeats Trinex. Um, we know that this is an dependency, but Tiru does not know that. Yeah, I think he has to. Like, if he's already down here at Ledger Bridge, um, he, he, there's no reason to not kill Trinex if you don't know that it's uh, not Pedestal. Yeah, and then I'm um, trying to speculate on where Vula will go after Meyer. I don't know that he has a play other than Dark Death Mountain at this point. Yeah, Vula will have to go to Dark Death Mountain. Tiru, uh, unless he finds the bow here, uh, he'll probably do just uh, his mirror checks. And uh, getting the mirror is going to lead him to go over to King's Tomb. Bomb upgrade on Laser Bridge. Heart piece on laser bridge. Ooh, taking a fall. Taking another fall. And there's his key in his vanilla location. So yeah, we're going to see him go ahead and uh, take on Trinex here. I wasn't counting items either. Uh, Trinex may have something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks like Trinex should have something uh, out of that uh, item check. Uh, man, if this is a bow on pendant Trinex, that is a heck of a seed. <laughs> At the same time, though, if a boss is going to have an item, I think this is one of the best because once you get to this point, it's very difficult to nope out of the dungeon. Bulajin having a very easy um, vitreous fight with that temper sword. Tiru making sure that he uh, moves back to his uh, fire rod. Uh, unfortunately, there will be some ice on the floor. Yeah, Village is showing you how much faster having a tempered sword will make that uh make that vitreous fight. Tiru with a very comfortable Trinex fight. Let's see what red rupee we get here. Ah! <laughs> Just an arrow upgrade, actually, so I don't know if that is uh, better or worse at this point with all the arrow upgrades they've already had. Yeah. Looks like Bulajin is heading up. Um, it'll be interesting to see where Tiru goes. I mean, at this point, um, K45 is open, Bamos Tablet, Graveyard Ledge, and King's Tomb. I mean, to me, as far as density, I mean, I think the the Graveyard Ledge would be the, the better move to make there. Got purple chest you can check as well. Yeah, good point. Purple check and then loop in the bombos tablet. Chat making a point that that uh, ice rod that we got as the first item, not leading to anything. The only thing that in the game that ice rod is required for is Trinex, and did not give us anything from there. Uh, Tiru's going to go ahead and finish off uh, Skull Woods, it looks like. Oh, and they have not turned in their green pendants yet, either. Yeah, this is an interesting play. It might be possible. I wonder if Tiru thinks he might be behind um, with the mirror in Skull... Uh, with the mirror in Turtle Rock. 
Um, I think there's only one more item here. He may hope that it's in the the bridge below Mokula. Which, you know, with Tempered Sword, you know, this isn't a... Mokula's not as difficult with the Tempered Sword, and they have enough hearts to make it a very comfortable fight. Um, maybe he checks under the bridge first and hopes the item's there. No, I think Mokula has only four hits with the Tempered Sword. You just gotta make sure he's not on the spikes. Yep. Yeah, Mokula is one of those bosses. Um, I tend to think like you can never be too overpowered for, um, because uh, when you hit Mokula up against the spikes, he actually doesn't take damage. Oh, we're getting a pet check from Tiru. Makes a little bit more sense. Of course, you know we know it's already not a pedestal seat, but um, he did it, so that makes this move um, a lot more valuable for him, knowing that it's not pedestal. I actually really like that play from Tiru. So what he did was he went to the Dark World and he was ready to complete Skull Woods. But after finding out it wasn't a pendant, he went ahead and noped out of there. I think that's a, a very smart play from Tiru. I mean, that, that bow still might be on either of those two. I don't know if we uh, just miscounted uh, items or not, though, in Skull Woods. No, I think there's still an item in Skull Woods, for sure. But knowing that the seed is an appendant seed, he may just think his time's better spent on some of the overworld checks. Fula gonna turn in his green pendant for five rupees. How did I know it was gonna be a rupee? Tiru is making the play sap. He is not going to Graveyard Ledge. He is going to check Hammer Pegs and probably pick up a purple chest. Just that seemingly is coated in grease every time that I play this game. <laughs> It's like Bulajin is actually going for a purple chest right now. Of course, he is saving and quitting. He can't do any of the overworld checks that you would normally do with it because he doesn't have the mirror at this point. Yeah, Bulajin is going to port down to seven and then just walk his way over. Well, now I'm kind of feeling the same way for Vulagen that I felt for Tiru earlier. It's like, I hope he doesn't find a bow here because, okay, well, he doesn't. So these are hard, so we're good. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that Tiru, that Vulagen, you know, doesn't find an item that leads him away from Turtle Rock because he's going to need that mirror. And we saw people farming rupees under pots and farming rupees in the dig game. And now we have Tiru just passing up on 300 rupees. Bulajin looks to be thinking. He's probably considering that Turtle Rock play right now. I and think that's where like we're going for it. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to see him go. Getting a little uh, kiss from the old man there, refilling his health. Tiru's going to look loop in a Bombos check. It's a very smart play there. Yet another heart container. Uh, these guys are getting beefy here. Uh, Bula going to go ahead and enter into Turtle Rock 
it'll be interesting to see if uh, once he gets the mirror, if he just mirrors out or saves and quits and goes checking uh, Swamp Palace at that point. That mirror is very early in T-Rock. I don't know. I mean, when you have a dungeon as died as item dense as Turtle Rock is, I think you have to continue it at this point. Oh, bow on graveyard ledge. That is huge. That is very, very big. And now he's about to get his flippers, and that puts Tiru in go mode, doesn't it? Welcome to go mode Tiru at one minute or one hour, 25 minutes and 58 seconds. And Vula can be very soon behind him, but it all banks on if Vula mirrors out after getting the mirror here on the top frame or not. Yeah, at the same time, though, like you have to look at the dungeons uh, Tiru has left to complete. He's going to get to go mode Ice Palace, whereas Vulajin full cleared it. He's also going to get to go mode Swamp um, and Pod. Although I will say Pod, you know, go mode Pod isn't as valuable as go mode Ice Palace or um, Swamp just because... You, you might have to look forever for the big key. But yeah, Tiru's going to have a, a very fun Ice Palace compared to what Vulajin had to complete. Now, Vula taking a few hits from those chomps. Those are very dangerous enemies. Uh, if you see, with, even with Red Mail, they take away a number of hearts. Yeah, this is my least favorite room in the game, actually. And there is the mirror, and Vula is going to go ahead and continue. Oof. That might be a decision that costs him later on. I mean, with the knowledge that Vulajin has, though, I do think mathematically, like, this is the right choice. Um, just because the, the chance of having to come back here is so great at this point. But, you know, unfortunately, like I said, we know that it's the wrong play for the seed. Um, so I can't fault him for doing this, but just unfortunately, we know that it's not going to pay off. Now we'll have Tiru searching for the uh, big key here in pod. Yeah, it is very easy for us to project onto the players that whether a play is the, the good play or a bad play because we have all the information. Uh, Vula is doing what is right for Vula. Um, it's the right play. We just know that it's not not what he needs to do. See, so with Bulajin and his mirror, does he have any more checks than Oh, he does, because he has the flippers right now. If he gets the mirror, he might do Swamp before he gets to Graveyard Ledge. Yeah, where he checked uh, where he checked uh, King's Tomb. The only thing he has up there is Graveyard Ledge. Yeah, that's gonna, it's going to be difficult to... I mean, everyone wants to go mode swap because it's convenient, but at the same time, that, you know, six items in that dungeon, that's going to be hard to pass up. <laughs> Tiru is still looking for that big key. Well, we know it's got to be in one of these two chests. And there it is.
It's just one of those examples where one random check can mean the difference because with Tiru, when he went to Turtle Rock and found his mirror, he didn't have flippers, which were locked at King's Tomb right next to a mirror check. Whereas with Vulagen, whenever he gets his mirror, he has the flippers, which um, just opens up a whole lot more for Vulagen getting that mirror than it did with Tiru. So um, just the way randomizer goes. Like I said, uh, you find uh, one item that takes you down a certain path, and your opponent finds the same items in a different order that leads them down a completely different path. Lulogen with some very nice laser bridge strats. Ooh, taking a hit right before his small key. Yeah, that laser bridge looks like it's uh, getting better of both of them this race. It's certainly not as easy as it looks. Um, you watch uh, some runners there, and they just, you know, line it up immediately and take the dash. But it's not as easy as it looks to get that timing right. Tiru heading into Helmosaur. Uh, this fight will give you a good example of how powerful those Silver Arrows actually are. Uh, I think in the math that it works out, that Finder Sword attack will deal 1 damage. Uh, Silver Arrows will deal 50 damage. Just a little more. Slight difference there. Lulagen managing to avoid getting ice on the floor. Got and synced up explosions. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about psychology. If you're Vulagen, do you actually feel behind right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You had to double dip uh, Thieves Town to get those uh, gloves when Thieves Town is usually uh, just to straight up finish it whenever you're in there. Uh, it looks like Silvers are actually 100 damage, so twice as much as I originally thought. Uh, thanks, chat, for uh, correcting me on that one there. Oh, and it does look like Bulligen is going to um, Swamp Palace. So I do believe he is going to full clear this dungeon. Tiru just missing the, the quick spawn on the skeleton room. Yeah, Vulagen forgetting to drain the dam. You have to wonder if nerves are getting to him at this point. So with Vulagen going into Swamp Palace, um, it would be nice if he finds butter. You know, that might be something that um, that Tiru misses in Swamp Palace. But aside from that, there's really not a whole lot of value to be had here from Vulagen. Um, nah, butter is pretty much the only thing he could really even want out of here. Yeah, probably worst case scenario would be finding something like Shovel. I don't know if any other fetch quest items are out there right now, but just anything that leads him away from Graveyard Ledge. Here we're going to have a very quick armos fight with Silvers. 
and getting his arrows back, which is really nice. Yes, yeah, just going into Swamp is just going to take up... Man, Fula just needs to get back up there and check out that uh, graveyard ledge. Otherwise, it's just a, a wild duck chase. Yeah. At the same time, though, you can't really fault him for the decisions he's making, you know, given the information that's available to him. Tiru is living the dream, getting the opportunity to go mode both Ice Palace and Swamp Palace. Always really, really fun. Uh, two dungeons that you don't necessarily need the big key to complete uh, when you're go moding. Uh, big key is only necessary in Swamp just for getting the big chest, which normally holds the hookshot. Uh, Ice Palace, as long as you have the red cane, you can actually just drop in after doing the bomb jump and use that instead of having to push a block. Bulajin not having a whole lot in Swamp Palace. Um, did I miss it, or did Bulajin skip the left side? Uh, he certainly did, which is good for him. I uh, hope he doesn't go back to it. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, kind of a hard call to make when you're in his position. Um... We, we know that it's the right play, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of hard to leave an item. I mean, at this moment, uh, he left, he got burned on leaving an item in Thieves Town. We know that he also left an item in Skull Woods, so this would be a, the third dungeon that he's leaving an item in. Um, we, we know where his bow is, but at the same time, that's going to be something that he, he might second guess later. Yeah, that's one of the really cool things about Randomizer is... Very rarely do you have actually good and bad plays. Uh, they're just right or wrong plays. Um, Religion made a lot of good plays. They just turned out to not be the right plays. Um, of course, you'll still have things like going to go check Ice Frog Cave first if you still have Kakariko on the board. But overall, man, Randomizer's a lot of fun. It just takes a game that was fantastic 30 years ago, 28 years ago. Uh, that Game Informer just called the best game of all time. Uh, and change it into something completely different. Uh, it feels like a game like MetHack or Spelunky, uh, but just with a Zelda twist to it. Yeah. Tiru having a little bit of trouble with that bomb jump, but luckily he got it. Took him a couple tries to get the lineup right. At this point, I'd be interesting to know. I'd be interested to know if Tiru feels as if he's behind, um, because he did full clear Meyer, which was unnecessary. Um, and I'm trying to think if there were any other plays. He did a lot of overworld checks that didn't quite work out for him. But at the same time, they're they're common overworld checks. You know, like I would have expected if I was Tiru, I would expect my opponent to make the same checks I made. Um, but that Meyer check, I wonder if he feels behind because he full cleared Meyer, or maybe even full cleared. Uh, Turtle Rock, you know, the, he might think that his opponent um, ducked out of it and might feel behind there too. You know, I think Tiru probably feels like he's behind. Uh, Tiru is he's playing with Spula, who who has a uh, a fan base and reputation in the speedrun community. He helps out with the GDQ. Uh, Tiru has only been playing this for about six months. Um, Talking to him before the race, I was congratulating him on his record for somebody who hasn't spent a lot of time playing Randomizer, and 
he seemed like he was very humble about it is the best way I can say it and uh, him uh, him winning here is uh, gonna be big for him very clean cold stir fight Lulajin has fluted to three. Hopefully he makes his way to Graveyard Ledge and not into Skull Woods. And it uh, looks like he is going to head over to Graveyard Ledge, which is good for him. Um... He is a dungeon bag, but the only two dungeons that he needs to do are Eastern and Pod. Uh, if Tiru does not have the best uh, the best execution in Ganna's Tower, like Vulli could still feasibly be in this uh, Eastern and Pod to be done one after another very quickly. Yeah, the only downside being that the um, I believe the big key for pod is probably going to be in the next to last chest that he checks. Yeah, it's going to be back there in that uh, dark maze. But Tiru, uh, you'll see how fast a, a go mode swamp is. Uh, full and clearing swamp can take about 9 to 10 minutes. Go moding swamp can take 2 and a half if you're slow. Yeah. Tiru making his way into Swamp Palace, gonna have a very comfortable Argus fight. Yeah, this is still closer uh, than you would expect, uh, than what it looks like, but uh, unless Tiru has uh, has execution issues with GG, uh, I think it's mostly in his court at this point. Yeah, I would agree. Um, the only other variables you have at this point, I believe, are um, the right side, left side gamble. Yeah, Bula finds the key in that first uh, right side room, and GG uh, Bicky is a in that back room with the four chest, and Kiru decides to do the full left side. It could be close. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and there are other things too. Um, I know uh, my last race, I had my nerves get to me, and I think I fell to Mordor. I fell to Moldorn too, like three or four times so you really never know what can happen at this point um especially if you feel like you're behind uh, that can get into your psychology and um sometimes it results in uh some execution errors so yeah this is really far from over yeah please give both these runners a follow here uh if you're watching them on twitch uh i will get the uh links to their twitches here in the chat uh but putting yourself out there in a tournament like this uh it is 512 players but being restreamed and putting yourself out on the big stage, uh, this is uh, stressful for them. Uh, give them follow, uh, subscribe to them, check them out. Uh, good people. And Vulijan opting to check the dark basement before checking the dark maze so yeah that big key is going to be one of the last chests he opens thankfully finding that shovel before uh or after he's down to go mode yeah i forgot that that was in pot actually uh tear having a little bit of trouble there with honor oh, guess
And that is Crystal number seven for Tiru. Uh, here in the Link to the Past Randomizer community, we have a game that we do like to play. Uh, there are 22 possible big key locations for Ganis Tower. Uh, we would like to see you all take a guess as to which location you think there will be. Choose a number between 1 and 22. Um, the order that Tiru opens them up will be the order that we go by. Uh, if you are a subscriber to any of the Speed Gaming channels, or if you've donated 250 bits, uh, if you win, you will get a spot on our leaderboard. Tiru with the triple tap on the dead rock. He will not be denied his Ganon's Tower. P-Train, where do you think this big key is going to be? I'm going to vote after Armos. All right, all right. I'm going to say... I think it's going to be right side. I think it is going to be the right side uh, four chest room. I think it'll be the top right chest. Yeah, generally, I always vote for whatever the, the 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 location that offers the biggest puzzle. Like especially if they don't have boots, I love for it to be after Armos, um, just because you have to figure out the the invisible bridge. Or you know if they don't have boots and it's on torch, you know, and that sends them back out again as tower. But unfortunately, um, these runners pretty much have a full loadout. I can't. I mean, aside from butter sword, there's really not. Only thing they're lacking in their inventory at this point is a cane of burna and the butter sword. I am so uh, really not lacking for a whole lot. I'm still waiting for the seed that has red cane in Ganis Tower, uh, but boots are on the torch and boots are on pedestal. Bulajin opting to kill Helmosaur without doing the holding the spin charge um, slightly faster because you don't have to wait for the the spin attack to whip out your arrows. But um, very nice uh, um, boss fight done by Bulajin. We will check Tiri's chests here. Uh, chest one is going to be a bomb upgrade. Chest two is going to be a small key. Uh, Tiri is going to continue on to the right side. I agree with this play. Um, I think statistically it might slightly favor the left side, but if it's on the right side, you lose so much time by checking left first. Um, but if it's on left side, you lose less time checking right first. Here going into a room with my least favorite enemies in the game, the Gibdos. Uh, they're super easy with Fire Rod. I hate them with anything else. For, for how harmless they look, they're incredibly annoying. They don't charge at you. They don't have any kind of an attack. They just walk. But they take forever to kill with anything other than the Fire Rod or Butter Sword. Chest 3, 300 rupees. Chest 4, Heart Container. Chest 5, Butter Sword. Chest 6, the map. Now Tiru can tell his way around Ganon's Tower. That makes for an incredibly easy Ganon fight. Uh, Tiru, remember to pick up a small key here. That's going to come in handy later on. Uh, if you want to see why that's super important, uh, go watch Pika Pals versus Fant. Uh, that is a fantastic race. Uh, super close, and it'll show you exactly why you need that small key. Uh, looks like that was chest seven on Bob's uh, torch. Chest 8, small key. Chest 9, small key. Chest 10, Kana Burna. Chest 11, Red Ruby. It's like the casual just walk up and slice, uh, slice the Stalfos. Double fire bar room is going to be chest 11. 50 rupees in chest 11. Bulajin picking up his last crystal. He's going to be heading up to Ganon's Tower. Um, if he goes uh, left side first, this could be a very close race. 
Yeah, but if he goes left stop first, he's going through with tempered while Tiri's going through with butter. Bulajin getting dead rocked. Can't quite go over far enough to despawn them either. Bulajin just getting absolutely wrecked by the rolling rocks and the dead rocks. The fire snake Very room. unfortunate in NMG there, or RNG. Just, uh, just well in the fire snake room, just an arrow upgrade. Wait, this is 14 here, right? I believe so. Maybe 13? Red Rupee. Heart piece. Heart piece. Red Rupee. So we had two in the first room, and the four down there, so that's six. The next chest coming up, I believe, is chest 17. I think it's 18, actually. Oh, good. Yeah, two on the right side, and then the four on the right side is six. Bob's chest is seven. Four in the south post room is uh, 11. Double fire bar. Fire snake. Rando room. Yeah, you're right. I forgot the fire snake room. If we're having trouble keeping check of chest, imagine what it's like for our tracker. Keep track <laughs> of all these guys' items. Good job to you guys. 18 Bob's chest, uh, bombos, or bombs. Yeah, Bob is an anti-fairy uh, anti sprite that um, doesn't get loaded properly if you do not get the item on the torch. So if you get the item on the torch, then Bob appears just as a regular anti-fairy. At 19, 20, and 21 here. Uh, 19, the big key. Uh, congratulations, P-Train. Uh, calling that out here. Uh, not calling a number, but calling out exactly where it was. Great job. Appreciate that. And it does look like Bula is going right side first. Uh, Tiru starting out his gauntlet here. Going really fast already. Good job, Tiru. Yeah, that was an excellent mimic room. Vulijin picking up his butter swords. That spike room is one of my least favorite rooms, although I will say that when you get the dash, it is one of the greatest feelings in the world. And Vulgin deciding not to near, or deciding not to continue on to Ice Armos. I'm mirroring back out and checking out left side. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that I can blame him because that next room is one of the worst in the game. No, I don't. I don't blame him at all. Um, so it's one of those things where we have information that they don't, and we know what the right play is, but it's hard for us to call the good play. We're taking a little bit of damage. I wonder if it will take the anti fairy safety here. Yeah, taking an unfortunate uh, arrow to the little uh, fireball guy. Oh, he actually he landed the silver arrow, but because he hit him with the butter sword poke, it didn't register. Excellent spin attack. Uh, Tiru down to two and a half hearts. Uh, I know he's got some potions and fairies. Opting not to take the safety heart there either. Mm -hmm. 
that room also feels really cool when you when you pull it off for the first time. You're like, I'm really good at this, and it's such an easy thing. Yeah, if I had to guess by the way Tiru's playing, he definitely feels behind. It's taking a lot of risks that, you know, like skipping the anti-fairy safety, skipping the, the heart under the pot. Like, I think he feels behind and he, he's trying to make up time at this point. He does have that fairy in a bottle, so there's that at least. Oh, it looks like he's got three fairies. Oh, wow, then yeah. I absolutely agree with the way he's playing then. Lulajin making his way to Ice Armost, and we'll be getting his big key shortly. And both of these players have to be just waiting for a done from the other player at any moment. Yeah. I mean, the seed has been fairly linear. Like there, there were a lot of bottlenecks that just kind of forced you to get the item that you needed next. From deep inside a pendant dungeon. Yeah. Oh, and two, you're taking a fall on Mordorm. Oh, oh, take another one. This is probably nerves. I know you said you had a same thing happen in one of your attorney races. Yes. It's not a fun feeling. I absolutely agree with this play with the magic. About a fifth of his magic, but well worth it for that safety. I uh, disrespect the last chest in the game. Yeah, falling to Moldorm 2 twice, I don't know that I would open it either. And we are on our way to Aga 2. Let's see how Tiru does with this. Rula having a very fast call at the start of here, too, as well. Uh, he's only got one attack in on uh, Aga 2 so far. Yeah, I think that was a double there. Meanwhile, Vulagen having a very good golf. And a nice and triple there at the end. Tiru with some frustration grabs up against the wall. Bulligen making very quick work over Lammo 2 with the silvers. And we are on our way to Ganon. Uh, Butter Sword, Magic Cape, Hookshot, uh, Half Magic, Silvers. This should be a pretty easy Ganon. Yeah, Tiru getting the spin off of Ganon's Trident, too. A one and one. Tiru is not playing games with his Ganon fight. Oh, Bulligen taking a fall on the lamp room. Still managed to get it though. We're on uh, phase three of Ganon here. Tiru opting not to go for the torch glitch. Um, 
Some people prefer the torch glitch, but I, I do believe it makes it easier to get doubles and triples on Ganon um, without the torch glitch because the odds of catching him in the center of the room are greater. It does. It does. Getting a double there. And that will be it for this race. Good game to Tiru. Uh, Tiru is going to finish with the official Speed Racing TV time. Let's see if I can pull that up here. It'll be the official Speed Racing time of 2 hours, 0 minutes, and 39 seconds. Very good game for Tiru. Absolutely. Bulletin not too far behind either. Looks like Tiru is uh, on his way to join us up here in the uh, in the Discord. We'll see if we can get him in for an interview. Tiru is taking a short break. Uh, he'll be right with us. Meanwhile, Vulijin having a very clean Aghanim fight. Yeah, this ended up being much, much closer than uh, you would have thought. Mulajin starting his Ganon fight. We'll see if he gets the one and one as well. And he does. We are immediately into phase three again. Have not seen that uh Mecha like a ha mecha like a ha ni ho on the uh, on the witch's hut before. Me either, I'm not quite sure what that means. Bulijin opting for Torch Glitch. Misses it, but tries for it. Oh no! Oh no, Bula. Uh, we'll pull Tiru in here shortly here. Tiru, good game. Virtua Cat, thank you very much. GG, man. Thanks, that was exhausting. Looks like it was pretty close. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was very close. Uh, Bula just took an unfortunate fall on uh, on the end of Ganon fight there. But yeah, you guys are neck and neck. There are multiple points where you all were going to the same place at the same time uh, with the same inventory. Um, your Death of Dark World access came right about the same time. Um, yeah, overall, it was a very, very uh, nice race on a very odd seed. Did he end up getting? Uh, did did he end up having as much trouble getting the bow and the flippers? the bow in particular. So he had the flippers first. Um, then he went and uh, did Ice Palace. He did the full clear of Ice Palace. Then he went up to Turtle Rock. Yeah, it was an interesting seed. I, I really do look forward to, to watching the VOD again. Um, I, I use a map tracker and I kind of just head for item dense locations. Uh, so a lot of times uh, you know, with all the adrenaline, I kind of forget where I found things until I actually go back and watch the bot. Yeah, uh, I think it basically, uh, you were ahead from probably the Thieves Town, uh, full of uh, noped out after the first four chests. 
Uh, you went ahead and cleared it out and ended up getting uh, time smits out of it. Oh, Vula taking a death, but I think he's got a fairy. Yeah, Thieves Town is a good place to get the mitts uh, because you have all of the. If you have the mirror, it's a great time to get, to get the mitts. I had the. Oh, another death from. Ah, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it, that, that ended up working out well. Yeah, one of the the big decision points, of course, was Vula noping out of Thieves Town early. But then another one was um, he checked King's Tomb before heading up to Turtle Rock. So whereas you found mirror. You, you were limited in locations because you didn't have flippers. Um, when Vula found the mirror, he had flippers, which opened up Swamp Palace. Um, so while you were getting your bow, which put you in go mode, he was full clearing Swamp, still looking for the bow. Did he do a full clear on Turtle Rock? Uh, he did. Yeah, I was really thinking bow would be on pedestal. I miscounted my... my uh... Skull Woods items. That's why I, I went to the pedestal in the Dark World. Uh, I was thinking that there was still one item left in Skull Woods. Uh, uh, we were too. And in case I needed the uh, the, the pendant, so I kind of got set up for that. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get out of there. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of overworld looking. Uh, never went up to the Zora area at all. Uh, I won't say congratulations to Vula here, uh, finishing with an official speed racing TV time of two hours, six minutes, and 29 seconds. So good game to him. Uh, very close match. So as you were running, Tiru, did you feel like you were behind or did you feel like you were in the race? How, just what was going through your mind as you were specifically making the run up to Ganon's Tower? Uh, well, I... I was feeling kind of average for maybe the first hour or so. Uh, you know, I went into pot early. Uh, that you know that that I messed up my green potion uh, trying trying to do the bow lock section. Uh, so, you know, fortunately, Thieves Town, you know, that kind of put me emotionally back on track. But then, then I started feeling like like I was really off because I ended up clearing, you know. Uh, all of Turtle Rock, and I, I just needed the mirror, essentially. There was nothing else in there. Uh, all of, I mean, Skull Woods, you know, essentially. And then just looking for the bow, I, I really didn't have that many places it could be. Uh, either Zora himself, because uh, I didn't have the flippers, uh, or the, the place I eventually got it. Speaking of looking for the bow, Vulajan joins us. How are you today, Vula? Hmm. Uh, hmm. yeah. Believe it or not, it was a very, very close race. Um, up until Thieves Town, you both were one for one. Um, you both entered Aga at the same time. You both entered Pod and made that check. Um, you both entered Thieves Town at the same time. Um, the the first divergence was actually Vulagen when you left Thieves Town. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was a pretty reasonable play since there was a pendant, uh, and it's not that slow to go back afterwards and uh, do it again. So I figured we were kind of limited. There was a pretty good likelihood I was going to go back there, and I didn't feel like it took me that long to get back around to it. But uh, boy, there were a lot of overall locations in that scene. There really were, and uh, two of them being up there at the cemetery. Uh, you ended up finding flippers before Tiru did, but Tiru uh, went into Turtle Rock and got that mirror and just ended up doing both of them at the same time. Did you end up, uh, did you leave Turtle Rock immediately upon getting the mirror, or did you keep going? I did a full clear of Turtle Rock. I was still looking for the bow with the flippers yeah. uh, at, at that point, so, you know, it's it was a it was a dungeon that I could full clear, and I I needed the items. Turned out to be nothing, uh, but yep. uh, you know you have that's what you have to do. Yeah, Turtle Rock was uh, was pretty garbage this time, and the mirror being so early too. Just like, hey, come on into this pendant dungeon, clear the whole thing, because like even on Laser Bridge, you're not going to find the compass, so you got to go. Or sorry, you are going to find the compass, so you got to go fight the boss. But <laughs> it's nothing. Get owned. Uh, yeah, getting the mirror there at the beginning of Turtle Rock 2, saying like, oh yeah, might as well go check out this uh, Mimic Cave as well. I think it was a uh, arrow upgrade. Ring. 
Oh, blue boomerang, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of safety in that seed. I mean, the the, the mail upgrades, you know, immediately. Uh, the the powder, I ended up taking advantage of that quite a bit more than I I would have preferred, but uh, it you know, it made the difference. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna be honest. Like, uh, I had uh, done some research prior to this, and and I felt like my best chance was gonna be if it were a less generous seed uh because like i just did one earlier today before uh before this and uh it was like a really stingy seed i ended up with like a total of 13 hearts but for a long time it was like seven or eight and i was able to do pretty well uh and i thought like man if if that were the case i would have a pretty good like advantage i feel confident in that execution and then the seed just started showering us and like half magic and blue mail and oh here's red mail too and it was like hmm well, all right, as long as the seed's like not super trolly and makes me check literally every overworld location terribly inefficiently, then I'm probably still okay. And then it did that, and I'm like, well, maybe Ganon's Tower? <laughs> that didn't work out either, so rip. I think there were only a few overworld locations that you checked that Tiru didn't. Um, you made a Zora check, and Tiru did not, and you turned in the green pendant which I don't think Tiru did. No, I, I did not. I forget what that was, but it was, yeah, it was garbage. It's a Honestly. blue rupee. Ah, yes. what, I got the bow and the flippers at the same time. So I had, I was able to go mode ice and swamp. Uh, I had, I had dipped into both pot and Eastern, but I was able just to finish those off quickly. I uh, didn't end up getting everything in pot, just got the big key and then went to the boss. Uh, so it was frustrating, to, you know, it took so long to find them, but finding them both together ended up ultimately uh, netting me, you know, a significant time savings. Yeah, you saved many minutes over me on that because when I got flippers, I still had swamp available, so I had to, uh, sorry, I did not have access to the bow and had swamp available, so I had to go do all of swamp before I thought, okay, let's actually go do uh, random overworld locations. And it turned out the random overworld locations were the win. Yeah, we talked about that a lot, Blue Legion. Like we we were very impressed with like your execution and stuff and mathematically you were making very good decisions. But just unfortunately like for this seed, your decisions didn't work out, which was very unfortunate. But um no, all in all it was very, very good play. It was a really fun race to watch because it was pretty close at the end there. Well, putting off Turtle Rock was well, a big mistake. Uh, I kind of brain farted when I got up to the Eastern Death Mountain. I was like, okay, I can do these overall locations. I, I can't do Turtle Rock in my mind, I said to myself. And I can, so I can just path over and do Spike Cave. I don't know what made me think that I couldn't do Turtle Rock, but for some reason I was like, oh, I can't. So I didn't go in, and then I ended up uh, I don't even remember what happened at that point where I ended up going. I think that was when I got did the save and quit to get the flippers but uh like i would normally have like in my normal routing i would have been like turtle rock has five locations plus mimic cave i'm going in here or five non-dungeon items uh i had all three medallions so there was no problem with that oh right i didn't have mirrors so that's why there we go good good job me Well, the, I, I mean, I can definitely play more conservatively if there's, you know, no red mail or there's fewer hearts. But, uh, you know, when when you have that, I, I tend to be aggressive and just push through things and take the damage you know, just to save a little bit of time. But you know, it's 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 not an absolute necessity. Yeah, I was a little worried for you actually coming out of land mode too. I think you had like two and a half hearts, um, and then I mentioned it in chat. Was like he has three fairies though, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I I knew that I could get to the the two uh, the bunny beam and anti fairy up before Moldorm two uh, without taking any damage. So I just did I just did that. So Bulajin, we we asked Tiru this before you saw the before you saw the done uh, while you were in Agatu. Did you feel behind during the race at any point, or did you feel like you were in the running? 
I don't really, uh, my brain doesn't really process ahead or behind so much during races. Uh, like, I don't, I don't think about it in those terms. It's more like, do I feel good about how the seat is going or bad? And basically the entire time I felt bad because of how poorly my decisions were panning out and how spread out everything was. I, even when I found Mitt, like, Mitt was fine. I was like, okay, well... I found like the fire rod and pod that was pretty good like I, I felt like that was a pretty reasonable thing to do and then it would be reasonable to expect that maybe my opponent didn't do that but it would at least like delay stuff and then you know the hammer and skull and then just not getting back to Thieves Town for a little bit was like that's fine because it hasn't seemed to limit me from anything and then when I got the mirror in Turtle Rock I was like I think by that point I was like I have to hope that my opponent got pretty much exactly the same amount of held up trying to get through this item chain because it was all just kind of strictly ordered in that awful fashion uh, but pretty much the entire time after that like from the time that I was full clearing ice and mire and getting literally nothing and then continued to get nothing in swamp and then uh, finally got the mirror I just felt bad like I had a very very negative feeling the entire time and so when i saw the dot done i wasn't surprised but uh i like that was the end of my ability to play the seed as you can tell from my aghanim 2 and ganon all right well as a reminder um please feel free to give the runners a follow um special thanks to virtual cat for um commentating with me uh virtual cat do you have any other questions you want to ask before we sign off no i think we're good i think these guys need to rest after that seed um yeah follow both these runners uh follow speed gaming 135 follow alttpr rando um those uh twitch channels as well if you want to get into this just go to vt.alttpr.run uh get you everything that you need to get set up there uh play a few seeds just on your own and then get into the next tournament it's a lot of fun I think uh, I think we're gonna close it off here. Uh, but you guys, good games. Thanks again for uh, putting yourself out there for a great race, and I uh, hope you all have a great night. Thanks for commentating. Good night. GG, dude.